His Highness Staff Commander Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the Eastern Fleet of the Royal Saudi Navy, where he was received upon arrival at the King Abdulaziz Naval Base in Jabil by the Commander of the Eastern Fleet, Rear Admiral Asaja bin Rafid Al Anizi, and a number of senior officers. The Commander of the Eastern Fleet briefed His Highness on the fleet's missions and duties and its work plan, reviewing its capabilities and the level of its readiness. His Highness toured the King Abdulaziz naval base, where he viewed the various warships and met a number of ship captains and crews. His Highness affirmed the deep-rooted historical relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, which have been progressing at all levels in light of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Highness noted the keenness of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud on bolstering cooperation and coordination and supporting the progress to achieve the desired integration in various fields. His Highness affirmed the important role of the Royal Saudi Navy alongside the armed forces of brotherly and friendly countries in establishing the pillars of security and stability to support development in the region. He noted the Royal Saudi Navy's readiness, competency and high expertise that enables it to carry out its role effectively. His Highness noted the importance of continuing to enhance cooperation and coordination in various fields, particularly military and defence, to achieve aspirations. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the Eastern Fleet Commander for the warm welcome, wishing them success. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met with the CFA Society of Bahrain President Ziba Asghar. The Minister praised the efforts in enhancing and developing the sector and the national cadres employed in it by providing them with knowledge and skills in financial analysis and investment and presenting reports on the performance of financial markets around the world, contributing to the achievement of the desired goals for the financial and banking sector. He emphasised the importance of the role of specialised professional finance associations in building the capacities of the cadres in the financial and banking sector and refining the talents in line with professional development according to the latest global standards and best practices. He pointed out the importance of continuing to support the financial and banking sector and providing it with the latest innovative financial practices and tools, contributing to achieving sustainable economic growth. The meeting reviewed the plans and programmes offered by the association and its role in the development of specialised outputs in the financial analysis field. The Kingdom of Bahrain enhanced its leading global status in the information technology and telecommunications ICT sector for the second consecutive year, ranking fifth globally and third in the Arab world in the ICT Development Indicator 2024, issued by the International Telecommunication Union, after it scored 97.5, surpassing the global average of 74.8 points. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohamed al Kabi, affirmed that Bahrain's continuous progress in the IT and telecommunications sector is a result of its efforts to develop sectors and achieve comprehensive economic development according to the vision of His Majesty the King, with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Minister added that the Ministry endeavours to develop this vital sector and provide all that is required to achieve its vision of building a sustainable economy that serves the Kingdom. The Minister of Social Development, Usama al Asfor, attended the inauguration of the second GCC International CSR Conference and Award under the theme Strategic Practices for a Better Tomorrow. The conference is organised by Bahrain CSR Society and Eastern Province Council for Social Responsibility in Saudi Arabia. On the occasion, the Minister of Social Development affirmed Bahrain's commitment to supporting programmes and projects aimed at achieving sustainable developmental social services. He hailed Bahrain's achievements in the field of social responsibility. The Minister noted that the second edition of the award came to affirm the region's human potential, capable of managing vital issues and enhancing work quality. 
He also affirmed the Ministry's keenness on honouring these efforts, which highlights the commitment to the values of social responsibility. Following the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning begins delivering alternative housing services to those with applications prior to 2004, which will allocate an additional budget to finance alternative solutions and options for those with old housing applications. The Ministry has begun procedures for delivering alternative housing services to beneficiary citizens within a timetable prepared by the Ministry to meet existing requests and according to their seniority. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Arumehi, affirmed that the Ministry began today allocating a package of the residential voucher project in East Citra for beneficiaries of the first option for solutions and alternative options which includes the allocation of a housing voucher, in addition to construction financing through the Tazheel programme, which amounts to 40,000 dinars, while the coming period will also witness the delivery of residential apartments to beneficiaries of the second option, which includes a financial grant worth 3,000 dinars, with a two-year exemption from maintenance fees for common areas at the beneficiaries union. Within the framework of the official visit to Washington, a signing ceremony was held on an agreement of understanding and cooperation on applying the fast track system for technical examination of patents with the US Patent Office. In the presence of the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakro, and the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Commerce for Intellectual Property and Director of the Patent and Trademark Office, Cathy Vidal. The Minister valued this step which drives Bahrain towards further development of the patents and intellectual property sector, emphasising Bahrain's position in preserving and protecting all types of intellectual property and patent rights, which in turn contributes to increasing the flow of investments. The agreement comes as part of the work plan to develop the regulatory and procedural framework related to the registration of intellectual property and patents in cooperation with the Prime Minister Office. Through this agreement, Bahrain aspires to enhance cooperation with the US Patent Office to build a knowledge-based economy based on creativity and innovation. The system also aims to provide an attractive environment for regional and international investments. The system ensures the patent applications are processed efficiently and effectively, ultimately positioning Bahrain as a hub for technological progress and intellectual property development, fostering an ecosystem that fosters innovation. The President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, the SLRB, Basim Al Hamar, received representatives of five private cathedral offices to discuss SLRB's efforts to improve its digital interface, to provide better accessibility to data and information for cadastral offices, as well as develop cadastral offices' technical capabilities. Al Hamar stressed the important role played by the real estate sector in supporting various development paths and enhancing the competitiveness of Bahrain to achieve the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa with the continued support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. He praised Bahrain's cadastral offices for their efforts in fostering partnerships between public and private sectors, supporting the real estate sector and ensuring efficiency and transparency in their services. Since its establishment in 2006, the Labour Fund Tam Keen has been able to launch support initiatives and programmes in light of the National Plan for developing the labour market. In 2023, it was able to support the career development of Bahrainis working in the private sector by supporting institutions, raising productivity and adopting technology to enhance economic impact and sustainable growth. More in this report. Since its establishment, Temkin has sought to accelerate economic growth in the kingdom by providing programs and support to institutions and individuals based on an understanding of the economic vision of Bahrain, local market variables and global economic transformations. Temkin was able to launch pioneering initiatives that drive productivity and accelerate sustainable growth this year by involving the national human element. 
More than 8,800 Bahrainis who were new entrants to the labor market were supported by employment support programs, and more than 12,000 Bahrainis' career developments were also supported, while more than 5,000 enterprises were supported through enterprise support programs, and small and medium enterprises constituted 57% of the total enterprises receiving support. In 2023, Temkin was able to provide programs and services with a significant impact that stimulated economic growth and individual success through designing programs that meet current market needs and achieve record results in supporting employment and training for Bahraini cadres. In addition to tangible support of institutions implementing commitments towards national plans, including the objectives of the Economic Recovery Plan and the Labor Market Plan, and enhancing the use of labor market data and statistics, which enhances innovation, competitiveness, and flexibility in the market. Tim Keen adopts a comprehensive vision with the aim of creating a prosperous local business environment with qualified competencies that achieve the development goals of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain is moving steadily towards leadership in space science thanks to continuous government support and the passion of creative youth. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain is taking steady steps towards leadership in the field of space science, technology and applications through the efforts made by the National Space Science Agency, which enabled it to be an honourable model for the development the Kingdom is witnessing and its keenness to empower its youth with advanced sciences. The agency's most notable achievements are the launch of the first Bahraini satellite in 2021 designed and developed by a team of Bahraini youth, the establishment of a satellite laboratory at the National Space Agency, the establishment of a laboratory to process space data and satellite images. A team from the agency was also able to use artificial intelligence techniques to automatically monitor all the palm trees located in the Kingdom of Bahrain, in addition to the victory of young Bahraini space engineer Aisha al-Haram by winning the international award allocated to the youth category in the space sector, Young Space Leaders, by the International Astronautical Federation. All of Bahrain's achievements place the kingdom among the leading countries in the space sector and contribute to international efforts to harness space science and its applications in the service of humanity. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel al Assoumi, appraised the great efforts and pivotal role played by His Majesty the King in supporting the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian people and defending their legitimate rights during the speech delivered as part of his participation as a guest of honour at the opening of the plenary session of the Pan-African Parliament held in South Africa. He praised the relentless efforts made by His Majesty the King, especially since he assumed the presidency of the Arab Summit to mobilise regional and international support for holding the Middle East Peace Conference, which was called for by the recent Arab Summit to reach a just and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian cause on the basis of the two-state solution in the way that achieves security and stability in the region.